Hello, everyone. Oh, thanks for coming along. Tonight's show is about um, corporations and education and advertisers. And the amazing thing is, I was watching this thing, I was watching the news it was a little while ago, and do you remember the Russian-European space launch? Where they had this, where they had the Russian-Europeans, sort of bolted together bits of old shed and a scud or something or other. And, and they do that classic shot on the telly where you see the rocket going through the sky. And they start with the tip and go, and as I was watching, suddenly into view came the word Pizza Hut. <laughs> Pizza Hut sponsored the rocket. And I was like, God, that's a hell of a sponsorship deal. What happens if the, if the launch is sort of five minutes late? Quit off. <laughs> the, the weird thing about advertisers is that they don't just want to advertise on the traditional sort of things that they regard as... They regard sort of television, radio and billboards as traditional. They want to get into spaces that you don't expect it to be. I got sent a book, uh, it was a, an exercise book, a school book, and it's for kids to write in, as you can see. And schools get sent these for free, and you can see they are covered in adverts. This is for Pepsi with Robbie Williams. Uh, they've got, this is a, look at this, they've got an advert for Pop 2000. S Club 7 are playing, and uh, they've got here, ask your teacher to bring the whole class. <laughs> Teachers must really love that one. And they send this stuff from nursery through to sixth form, right? Jazzy Books, I should say, also said that um, they actually, because of their books going free into schools, they've saved the schools about two million quid. And their advertising list, they've got people like Procter & Gamble who advertise in there, BT, Adidas, Pepsi. We thought, well, this is interesting. Let's go, let's have a look at this. The name of the company, Jazzy Book. Jazzy Book, that's what it is. <laughs> So we thought, right, let's go and talk to the guy. And the guy in charge is a guy called Winton Rossiter, who's an American. And we went round to his offices to talk to him. And he said to me, look, you know, we send these books into 70% of British schools. Uh, we have not received one single complaint about it. Our survey shows that nearly everyone likes them. Um, he said, you know, we are actually endorsed by the uh, National Head Teachers Association and the National Confederation of Parent Teachers. Um, and he said, you know, we work on a policy. He said, if schools don't like it, we give it to them free, but they have no obligation to take it. If they don't like it, we, they can return it free of charge. And we work on a policy of ethical sponsorship. And I heard the words ethical. Ethical sponsorship. <laughs> I just went, nah. That's like, you know, friendly fire. D d no, no, no. Doesn't work. So I said, will you do an interview? He said, I will do an interview on condition that you do not talk to any of the sponsors. I said, I am not prepared to give you that assurance. He said, well, please. <laughs> I said, no, 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 I'm not prepared to give you that assurance. He goes, well, send me some tapes of the show so I can have a look at them and then I'll get back to you. <laughs> so we sent a couple of tapes round. Within moments, the phone rang. I really don't think Jazzy Books is suitable to this kind of format. <laughs> so ever willing to rise to the challenge... We thought, right, let's phone a school. We phoned this school in North London, comprehensive school, explained what Jazzy Books was and said, can we come in and talk to you? about Jazzy Books. How would you feel if you were sent these books and the school said to you, we have to get these books because we haven't got enough money and it helps balance the budget. How, just how, how would you feel about it? I feel like they were trying to, this were trying to get through you to through school and school is where you go like all the time and there's people there that influence you like your teachers and they're somebody you're supposed to be able to look up to. That's a really good point. That's an excellent point because, uh, uh, let me get this right, you're saying because your teacher handed you this book, this kind of has an added value for, as far as the advertisers go because you look up and respect the teacher. Okay. Are the school getting paid to hand these out? Because like, it seems like they're, that's why they do it because why would you buy like, rubbish books like that? The school, the school don't buy them, they get them they given get... free. Oh, okay. But the reason they get given them free is because the advertising paid yeah, for it. Exactly. The school has to complete some market research for the company. Yeah, um, I don't think the book should be allowed in at all, because it's sort of... School's supposed to be a sort of neutral place that's not covered in advertising. It's, sort of, it's, it's different from outside. I said to the kids, why don't we phone up Jazzy Books, OK, and, and maybe we'll talk to the guy. Oh, hello there. It's Mark Thomas from Channel 4. How are you? Hello, Mark. I'm just in a school in North London, and we've been discussing jazzy books uh, with the children here. And I'm recording this call for broadcast, 
and some of the children have got some questions that they'd like to ask you, if that's okay. Uh, well, I'm sorry, Mark, I'm just having my lunch now. Well, I mean, uh, talk some other time. I I'm but sure that they can it, ask you, um, there'll be very thank quick you, questions. They'll be very quick, Mr. Oster. <laughs> what do you think to what's just happened? Oh, I think he's got something to hide. You think he's got something to hide? What's his address? Shh, shh, shh. Sorry, you can't. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on a minute. What a great question. <laughs> he's got something to hide, so he don't want to tell us about it. Okay. He's wormed out of it. He's wormed out of it? He's a wimp. <laughs> he's a wimp. Maybe this is the reason he hasn't got any response back, any bad responses back, so he won't listen. I think you've got a very good point there. Maybe he just wants his lunch. Maybe he just wants his lunch. You could be absolutely right. He might actually just be going, why on earth should I put up with this bloke from Channel 4 who's a real pillock anyway? So I said, well, look, some of the people who've advertised are people like Adidas. And the teacher said, that's interesting because Adidas, multinational company, makes stuff all over the world. And we're teaching, you know, free trade, fair trade. Maybe you'd like to talk about this. So I started you know, discussing with the children uh, some of the problems that Adidas was having with its factories that it uses to source their material in Indonesia. And these kids were absolutely brilliant. And I said, what would you say if we could get through to a guy called David Hustleby? Right, here's the guy. He is the global head of their social and environmental policy. What would you say if we could get through to him? They said, you won't get him. I said, no, but what would you say? And they came up with all these questions and I have his mobile number. <laughs> so I phoned up David Hussleby, and he wasn't in. So all the kids lined up and left a message on his machine. <laughs> and they're all just, hello, my, James, my name's Jane. I'd like to know why you pay the workers so low wages in Indonesia. Thank you. And then they pass it on. Hi, I'm Graham. I'd like to ask about questions about workers' rights. Thank you. Pass it on. Hi, I'm Tim. I'd like to ask about false overtime. And you just thought, this is genius. They just, brilliant. This went on for ages. I would have loved to have been there when he picked up his messages. <laughs> this is your voicemail uh, messaging service. You have 18 messages, and boy, are you in trouble. So, <laughs> anyway, we broke for lunch. After lunch, he phoned us. Hustleby phones while we're teaching in the class. And I said, oh great, it's Mark Thomas here from Channel 4. Uh, I'm in a North London comprehensive school. There's about 30 children here. Um, that we're discussing sort of Adidas and um, the, the factories in Indonesia. And I'm recording this call for broadcast. I've got a couple of speakers, nice big ones up on the desk here. They can hear every word you're saying. And there's a silence and he went, hello everyone. What class is this? It's geography. I said, now the kids have got a list of questions I'll ask. And the kids were just brilliant. Because the first question was just, sort of, boom, why do you pay the workers so low wages? Second question is, how do you feel if your children worked in those factories? Third question, do you believe in heaven and hell? Which one do you think you're going to? <laughs> how would you feel if your own children were working in that factory? Well, if I was an Indonesian parent and uh, my child was over 15, then, uh, and I was sure that they were doing a, a, a job that, that could earn the family some money.